Muhammad Ali approaching the ring rather deliberately. It isn't how you go in, it's how you go out. That's the important thing. Muhammad Ali, for this epic moment in the Philippine uh, Coliseum in Quezon City, adjacent to Manila. Ali weighed in his... Ali weighed in 224 and a half at the official weigh-in on Saturday. When they fought in 71, Ali was 215, Frazier 205 and a half. Joe Frazier, Milt Bailey, Eddie Futch, and George Benton are with him. Muhammad Ali, Dick Sadler with him, his brother. In a moment, the ring announcer, the very capable Joe Cantata, will send the ceremonies on its way. This is 15 rounds or less, as they say in boxing. You know, Brian says it's a hot day. It must be 100 degrees here, you. Trust the humidity. Bless the crowd. I'd say there are about 30,000 here. Can't hold any more. Joe Frazier finally stripping down for the fray. He'll be wearing blue denim. There must be over a thousand uh, correspondents from all over the world covering this uh, epic fight internationally for newspapers throughout the country, throughout the United States, throughout the world. Okay. Ali wearing white trunks, Joe Frazier wearing blue denim trunks. They have not put the gloves on yet. They will be eight ounce gloves. The referee will be Carlos Padilla from the Philippines. And as I told you earlier when I was talking with Ken Norton, all three of the officials are Filipinos. John, if I'd like yeah. to make a comment about the weight factor, I feel that since they weighed in Saturday, that was, what, five days ahead of time, ahead of schedule. So therefore, the weight will have no bearing here because I'm sure by the time they worked out three, four more days, plus after they dried out, they were down to the fighting weight. And I would think that would be about 219 for Ali and maybe 212 for Frazier. Can I? I just guess that. What do you think? Uh, possibly so. I'd say more around 220 for Ali because he's, he wants to go in a little heavier because it's hotter and he, he'll perspire more, and that way he'll uh, have more left in the end. I thought Joe would go down to about, two, you know, about 212 or 211. Ken, would you think uh, Joe gets his hitting power from his big legs? He's got very big legs. I think that basically Joe receives his power from working in the slaughterhouse as a... As a a, a, a common worker at one time. That's very hard work. Plus, he had a very hard life coming up, and he really had to you know, work hard. And I feel good. We're going to have a presentation here by ring announcer Joe Cantada. Is that the one they're giving me? <laughs> well, it's probably for you, Ken. It, it's not for me. Well, I tell you, Don, I would take it home. It's a beautiful trophy. Very beautiful. There's Milt Bailey uh, with a quizzical expression on his face. What do you think Milt was thinking of? He's the cut man for Joe Frazier, and Joe has never been cut up to now. Uh, he's been very fortunate in that sense. He uh, has that type of skin tissue that he's been, he swells, but it doesn't break. They've, uh, they've been waiting for the uh, gloves to come in, Flip. Uh, now the moment of truth is not far away, and I, I know you've got thoughts in your own mind, but what can you tell us? Well, uh, I can only say that along with myself and millions of other people, the suspense is just about over. And in a few moments, we will either have the greatest heavyweight champion of all time or another sensational comeback and a setup for what will unquestionably be the greatest fight ever in history. <laughs> Thank you, Flip. You know, uh, you know Brian, only uh, two men have ever regained the heavyweight title after losing it. One was Floyd Patterson and the other Muhammad Ali. So Joe Frazier would like to join that select list. Well, I tell you, I, I think uh, 
I think the way Ali's going to go at it, I really think it's going to be uh, a good punch and fight. I don't think that he can uh, sit back and wait because if it goes beyond eight rounds, I think Joe's got a good chance. So I think uh, uh, my own personal opinion is that Ali's going to try to work at him pretty. Joe uh, has always been uh, vulnerable in the early rounds. I think he lost the first round almost everyone he ever fought except a few knockouts uh, with non-consequential fighters he lost the first round twice to quarry to jerry lou uh, to uh, jimmy ellis to uh muhammad ali on two occasions mondo ramos almost knocked him down in the first round oscar bonavena had him down twice in the second so joe is a slow starter he really is and I, uh, I think that uh, that's going to be one of the great tests today is to how, how quick joe's going to get warmed up and how uh whether ali wants to sort of play around for a little bit or really go at it. Ken Norton, what can Joe do about that? He knows he's a slow starter. He knows that Ali knows it. What can he do about it? I think his best defense against that would be to stay low and try to slip punches because if he's a slow starter until he gets warmed up, uh, he's uh, Interviewing him. Uh, wow. Okay, well, we just... I know. Go ahead, Ken. Okay, I, I think... Back to the There's the announcer. Our main event will go this handsome trophy donated by <laughs> donated by His Excellency Ferdinand E. This trophy is donated by His Excellency yeah, President right. Ferdinand E. Marcos. Well, that goes to the winner. You know what's over the car? What car the trophy is going into? <laughs> That's in Frazier's car. You want to put him over here? Just that The government and people of the Republic of the Philippines, in cooperation with Don King Productions Incorporated, proudly present the Thriller in Manila. Introducing in the blue corner Weighing 215 and a half pounds, wearing light blue trunks with white stripes, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA, the challenger and former heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Frazier! and Larry Nadayag. Referee Sonny Padilla Jr. 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world.
Vegeta. Well, I was doing that. No picture. Frazier's smiling as Ali talks to him. It's 15 rounds. The ring is 21 by 21, a rather large ring. Which is beneficial for it, Ali. And who should help the champion? It's 15 rounds, and here is round one. Staying low to get away from that jab. Frazier smiling. Frazier keeps smiling as he corners Ali to the rope. Ali beats him to the punch. The referee Carlos Padilla. doesn't want to get trapped on the rope. behind the neck there. I'm going to ask Flip Wilson what he thought of that round. Flip? I think that was a sensational round, and I'm pretty sure that this would not go 15 rounds. That's my sincere opinion. What do you think, Hugh? Well, I, I think, as I said, uh, I think that Ollie realizes he's got to uh, come out and try to really do something in the first five rounds. And uh, that round proved it. He's going at Joe. He's not sitting back and playing around. Not at all. Tell him I, tell him I don't have a monitor, will you? We're waiting for round two. That was a big round for Muhammad Ali. No question about it. But Frazier always loses the first round.
grabbing around the neck. Frazier's still smiling as he pours in. Frazier working the body, Ali working the head. Two minutes left in this round. Sending him off. again. Frazier coming on at the end. Well, he, uh, this this gonna, shows you what a six and a half inch reach can We're going to show He's some uh, shots here by Muhammad Ali, the champion. In order for Joe to get in there, he's just got to wade through there and use that head. For Big the right floor. hand. That was, was a, some real good ones. That was a good one, you and Flip. He also got him a left hook on the jaw. Joe's got to take about two or three in the head in order to get in there to get the ball. There's Joe Frazier now as we come up to round three. <laughs> Ali uh, bowing in his corner. Angelo Dundee a little late getting out of the ring in uh, Ali's corner. Round three, scheduled for 15. Punches by uh, Frazier now as he's got Ali on the rope. Ali with the rope of dope. Frazier 
Rays are looking for an opening here. almost a replica of Alley and Foreman last year. difference between the punches Frazier was throwing when Alley was playing rope a dope and covering up on the ropes and the punches that Foreman uh, threw at Alley to no avail. Well I would have to say that on Foreman's punches there were more roundhouse punches. Joe's trying to pick his spots. He's trying to go between the hands. He's trying to go behind the elbows and the kidneys and this is bound to have a telling effect later on in the round if the fight goes that far. This I'm is when uh, Alley puts on the rally towards the end of the round. Frazier cannot match hand speed with Ali, so his best bet is to try to stay inside. When Ali starts throwing, he's either tie him up or push him toward the ropes. I noticed that Ali missed a lot in that round, as though he were over anxious. Uh, to a certain extent, he had played so much in the round, and toward the latter part of the round, always in the last 15 or 10 seconds, he tried to throw a big flurry. Here's round four. Frazier, the blue denim trunks, Ali, the white. Frazier to the punch. <laughs> Alley with the rope that goes again. Frazier looking for a spot. Um, he's not wasting punches, however. Been a one-sided fight so far. openings now for the body. Alley with those quick hands and sharp shooting keeps it his way. on the round. A low blow by Frazier. He's won by the referee. All right, ref. the 
away. Alley doing most of the scoring. Flip, uh, uh, it looks to me as though this is going to be decided on condition. And uh, I think Joe is starting to smoke. Uh, but I think it's going to... Uh, end up the way a lot of people probably suspect. There's the corner of Ali as he leads the cheering. Ali leading his own cheering. His chief second, Angelo Dundee with Drew Brown in there. Corner of Joe Frazier, Eddie Fudge, Milk Bailey, and George Benton. Round five coming up. Neither boy looks the least bit tired so far, although uh, Frazier has taken a good going over. They're both trained for a long fight, I'm sure of that. an awful lot like the first fight between Frazier and Ali in 1971 when Ali built up a big lead and then Frazier started to come on. I thought Frazier came on there. Let's let's take a look at uh, Frazier landing this good punch. It's very good left hook here by Joe. He leans back. And this is, uh, is going to be very detrimental to Ali in, in the later rounds if he stays on the ropes. Here's a very, there's the hook. And I, the I noticed he wasn't as sharp in that last round. He missed a lot. 
That's very true. Ali has to stay off the ropes. If he stays on the ropes, Joe can hit him in the, in the kidneys, under the heart, behind the ears, whatever, and it's bound to have a telling effect uh, later on in the fight. And yet he stayed on the rope against Foreman and won. Uh, Joe is a different type of fighter than Foreman. Short punches. They're a lot different. shorter and a lot more precise with him. We're coming up to round six. One third of the fight is over. Should it go the distance? It's 15 rounds. Frazier, the blue trunk. Alley and White. I don't know what they score for aggressiveness in the Philippines, but... Uh... Frazier has been the aggressor all the way. Coming in low. This is a good round for Frazier. I think it's turned into a pretty even fight after, yes, after a one-sided beginning. Yes, yes, I think uh, Joe has started to smoke, and it should be pretty close to even about now. He uh, landed two vicious left hooks at the start of the round, and we're coming up to round seven. It's been a fast bout. Yeah, Muhammad slowed, had slowed down on his uh, playing. He's playing around much less now. And uh... Let's uh, look at the replay here, Flip. That's a big left hook. That was early in the round. I think it was Frazier's best punch of the fight so far. Frazier's corner as we're waiting for round seven. Round seven, scheduled for 15. Frazier coming back. Alley dancing for the first time. Frazier's good right hand to the head for the first time. Frazier rolled with that punch. Oh, 
referee Carlos Patilla from the uh, Philippines. right now, picking his spots, breaking off the action when he wants to, resuming it when he wants to. Alley having a good round. stood up under Raleigh's best shot and vice versa. Big one. Ali got it in there. And around seven in the Philippines Coliseum. And uh, we're up to the halfway mark or near it, Ken. I'd like you. Uh, we'll first, let's take a look at this uppercut by Ali, Ken. You can see Joe's got him on the ropes now. Good step back, and Ali was his opening for the uppercut, which is very here it comes. comes. Ooh, that was a, a very good, good uppercut. But as you know, in the first fight, this is how Joe caught him on the ropes. He was throwing an uppercut, and he caught him over the top with the hook. So it's very dangerous, also. What do you think about condition of the two of them? Frazier has taken the more punishment, but Ali has taken a lot too. What do you think, Ken? At the present time, I would have to say that uh, Frazier is in better condition. Do would you really? Yes, I would. Oh, that's interesting. How about you, Flip? Well, uh, as I said earlier, Joe is uh, really starting to smoke. It looked a little shaky from the go, but Joe is starting to smoke, and uh, I think we're going on at a pretty good pace now, and uh, either man may win it right now. This round eight, Ali's trunks are dropping little by little. The supporter is obvious now. the challenger Razor is very strong and scores 
scoring heavily, even though he took a lot in this round. Frazier may have evened up the round. leaving himself more exposed on the inside. Brian to come in. Uh, you, uh, the 71 fight was a super fight, but I think this is just a super between I these men. Actually, I think it's better. Uh, Ollie's really st staying in there and punching with him all the way, and he's neither one, you can, couldn't say that either one is carrying the fight to the other at this point, I don't think. And I think, uh, you know, they're both in superb condition, and Frazier is unbelievable. The amount times that he got hit on the head that he got clocked there that he could that he could stand there and keep coming at him it's just fantastic the punches that he's been taking Ken Norton what do you think now what do I coming think coming up to round nine <laughs> at the present time Ali is definitely ahead uh, yeah. Joe has to find some way to uh, the bound to have a telling effect soon uh, he got stunned with a very good left hook there Ali hit him with a very good left hook right hand and Joe was staggered but I, Ali didn't notice that he was taking advantage of it Round nine, scheduled for 15. Boys dripping perspiration is hot here. Raise of the blue denim trunks, alley and white. <laughs> alley up on his toes more, setting the pace. Just as well for Ali that that one missed. Hey, Razor has been hitting a low a lot lately. Get that guard down. Two minutes left in the round. Serving his strength there as Alley holds on. Joe trying to set him up for the left hook, and Alley knows it. And again, is beating him to the punch constantly. These are good body shots by Frazier when he gets them in there. Joe coming in faster. A minute to go in the round. hooking with that left hand, head and body, body and head. <laughs> Round 
round almost over. round to Frazier on aggressiveness. Yes, I went on aggressiveness. Plus, when Ali starts boxing, he, he dances for maybe a few seconds, and he always ends up with his back on the ropes, which is very bad. This is Joe's best place. If Ali stays on the ropes, he's going to get picked to death you know, by Joe's punching power. And also, Ali has to keep him in, in the center of the ring, or he has to throw quick flurries on the ropes and get off the ropes quick. If he stays on the ropes, he's definitely going to uh, fall behind. You mean Ali? Yes, oh, Ali, right. Ali. Joe's best position is on the ropes. He can't match Ali for speed in, in, the, in the middle of the right, ring. Right. And he can't uh, do anything, anything in the middle of the ring. He's too short. So his best place is on the ropes. And uh, he's, he's walking Ali to, he's wa just walking him straight to the ropes every time. I, I would think that his body shots have uh, got to take some toll on Ali. But Ali's a remarkable athlete. Uh, up to now, they don't seem to have bothered him. If you notice, they have to bother him. He hasn't been dancing. He starts to dance and he comes down off his toes, which means the body shots are bothering him. Round 10, scheduled for 15. <laughs> Ali setting himself to punch harder in this round. Ali going flat-footed. has had an awful lot of trouble coping with Ali's fast hands. Muhammad Ali's got those fast hands. and keeps yelling cross yourself meaning get the arms across the body <laughs> Fraser doesn't get the clean shots at Ali that Ali gets at him Starting to grunt again with his punches. <laughs> Ali doing the holding again. <laughs> that did Ali no good. Flip. I think it's a pretty close fight. I do too. I do. Uh, heavyweight championship of the world. I don't yeah, think there's any rounds of bruising action. Uh, nobody's got a decided edge as far as I can I can see. And it's definitely uh, turns out to be the thriller that everyone expected. <laughs> and I think we're in for a few more rounds. I was off on my prediction of it ending before nine, but I still don't believe it'll go 15. Well, you O'Brien, do you have any thoughts on it? That well, I'll tell you the way it's going now. I think that uh, uh, I think it's going to go all the way. Unless, so? yes, sir, I do, and I, I think that uh, that uh, Joe is just let's it's fantastic Joe, the way he's taking it. Let's see Joe Frazier here now. 
in one of his uh, big rallies of the round. I still feel that Ollie's got control. Round 11, five to go. Ollie alternately dancing, fighting flat-footed and going to the rope. that time. Now this is a switch. Joe is on the rope. all the way here in the Philippine Coliseum. So far, a good round for Ali. in Frazier's corner. Referee trying to get them out of there. Frazier takes off on Alley now with the right hand. Alley will probably Ali. open up all of a sudden. A minute to go in the round. them but this has got to rank with Lewis and Kahn, Marciano and Walcott and the first Ali Frazier fight. This that's, is one of the great ones. That's very true. These men are staying on the ropes and this is where the men become men. There's, there's, there's no playing on the ropes. Ali's fighting back which was he's, he's fighting more than people thought he could on the inside. There's a lot of action here. Let's see this now. Frazier trying to trap Ali on the ropes. Ali with those sharp punches. I notice that Ali's not getting a good follow-through on his punches like Frazier is, though. Can he doesn't seem to throw everything into a punch. Ali is basically not a devastating puncher. Joe's main asset is his power. And Ali's main asset is the speed and, and the sharpness. And uh, in this fight, conditioning, physical conditioning, is going to mean a lot in the, in the few rounds that are left. Round 12. Ali starts the round, every round, scoring heavily. seems to be coasting a little bit here. And Ali is scoring on him. Oh. 
Two minutes left in the round. Razor looking for a spot on the inside. Round half over. Get out of the rope, Sam. Get out the rope. Get out the rope, Sally. Hey, hey. 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 A minute to go in the round. Frazier seems to be bleeding from the mouth. First sign of blood in the fight. Round almost over. Ken Norton, I thought uh, Joe Frazier showed signs of tiring for the first time in that round. He had Ali on the ropes a couple of times and uh, he didn't seem to have any zip. Now that's just my opinion. What do you think? I think he was told from his corner by Eddie Futch that uh, he's been throwing a lot of hard shots to the body. And they don't want a reiteration of what happened with Foreman of throwing yourself out on the ropes. So I, I would have to say that I think Eddie had told the man, like, to get some on the ropes, throw the punches, don't put, just, don't put as much power into them, just get the points behind them. Did you go over strategy with Hutch before this fight and uh, have him tell you what his strategy was? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Anyway, there's Muhammad Ali's corner. And you notice on Muhammad's punches, he doesn't have as much in them. They're not as quick as they used to be in the beginning. He's throwing good shot punches, but they're oh, not I as quick. They were, I thought they were pretty quick in that round. I don't well, think so, Don. You're the expert. Round 13. Allie trying to set the pace again. Allie ready to open up with those combinations. Both boys slow down for a moment.
Alley slips. Alley holding. looked awful tired is puffed around both eyes now John, Ken Norton John, for the first time Frazier has sustained a small cut under his right eye and he's very puffy under those eyes very puffy lost his mouthpiece again as long as I didn't see it come out as long as the cut is under the eye, it shouldn't be too bad for him because the blood cannot run into the eye. Getting a little smelling salt there, Ken. We're waiting for round 14. I would think that Ali has uh, regained the command of the fight. That's very true. Ali seems to coast until he sees an opening. When he has the opening, he seems to throw a big, rapid flurry. This has been Joe's downfall. Joe cannot match hand speed with him. So when Ali throws a quick flurry, Joe is very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Joe has taken a lot of punishment in the last couple of rounds. Anyway, we're coming up to round 14. I got eight four one. Allie has gone out for a knockout, I think, in this round. Whether he gets it or not is something else. Get this! about the interview in the ring.
was the biggest round of the fight for anybody. Frazier was within a punch or two of going down. The doctor comes up and looks at Frazier. I think it's going to be over. It's all over. I'm going to get up on the ring. I'm up in the ring here, and Muhammad Ali is pretty well spent, and I'm going to try to get over at him. We're, we're trying to get in here to talk to Ali, who has retained his title, and I think he needs a little air, because this has to have been one of the most bruising heavyweight championships of all time. Our cameraman's trying to get in here. Ferdy, Ferdy Pacheco, how is Ali? Ali is very good, only as you can see, he wanted to avoid all the pushing and mauling that goes on after one of these fights. Yeah. I think it was well stopped. I think nice they cleared the ring. Well, they're doing a better job here than they have any place else. I'm going to ask Herbert Muhammad to come over here. Herbert is the manager and a fine manager of uh, Muhammad Ali. Herbert, you must be very happy. I am very happy. All praise due to Allah. And I'm very proud of Muhammad. And I think Joe Fraser should be recommended for the brilliant fight he put on. Thank, Thank you very much. much. A fine, brilliant fight. Here's Joe Fraser come over to talk to Muhammad Ali. He's disappointed. Muhammad, can you say a word now around the world? Congratulations, like first of all. You'll be champion Ladies a long time, and gentlemen. gentlemen. So Wallace Muhammad, the leader of the Muslims now in America. I say I'm to my beautiful wife, Khalil Ali, family Belinda. Hello, the male Sloan of Louisville, the Central High School. Stand up, 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 stand up. We're trying to get another word. Muhammad, I'd like to ask you about the fight. Just, just a question. Did you have any doubt about winning at any time? Well, round 10, I surprised Joe had so much stamina. I surprised as in shape he was. And if I didn't have the condition, I know I would have lost. It was too much pressure. I think he deserved a, a lot of He is the greatest fighter of all times next to me. Except for you. Except for me. Thank you very much, Muhammad Ali, and good luck. Now, what do you think? Hello to Elliot Brown out there in Louisville. John J. Hooker. Uh, How about uh, Kenneth? John How Brown about, and everybody. Well, what do you think now? What's the future? Foreman against George Clark, Foreman. Can you fight the winner? That's right. And then I want to retire. This is too painful. It's too much work. Okay. Might have a heart attack or something. All I right. want to get up and go out while I'm on top. I know you're tired. Thank you again and congratulations. One more thing. I want everybody to know that I'm the greatest fighter of all times. And the greatest city of all times is Louisville, Kentucky. Here's the president. Ferdinand Marcos, the president of the Philippines, coming over to talk to Muhammad Ali. Hey, right, congratulations. Mm. Right, Jim. Mm. Right. Let's go ahead and get the trophy. President Marcos, could I just Come ask a word? Yes, yes, what sir. What think of the fight? Wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. Here's the uh, trophy being given to Muhammad Ali by the president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos. Beautiful trophy. It goes on exhibition in Louisville, Kentucky, at the high school where I came up from. I want to say hello to everybody at Madison Junior High School. It's got a new name now, Virginia Avenue and Duval Junior High. Greatest schools in the world because I went there in Louisville, Kentucky. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Let's see if we can get... Well, back we go to ringside. Fine. We're going back to ringside now.